Hello, everybody. Well, it's, what a great night this is, eh? Fantastic night. I understand there are some people here who have flown in just for tonight from Massachusetts. Is that true? Where are you? Indianapolis. Indianapolis. You've flown in from Indianapolis just for tonight. You know Peter's dead, don't you? <laughs> Fair enough. I've just seen Peter for the last couple of years of his life, actually, and uh, which is a great shame, because I'd like to know him for longer. But one thing I do remember about him is that he was always very funny about death, anyway. It was one of the subjects that he could always be funny about. And I appreciate that, because I think people get very worried about any kind of comedy about death, but it is a subject that people are very odd about. I mean, my first, my first experience of death, apart from tonight, was, um, <laughs> was um, when my grandfather died, right? And my grandmother started going to his grave every week and putting flowers on it. She said it's what he would have wanted. I presume what she meant by that is it's what he would have wanted if he was still alive. <laughs> which strikes as a bit odd, because what he would have wanted if he was still alive was to be dug up. <laughs> but the comedy of death, right, the comedy of death is really about time. You know, you add enough time to death and it becomes funny. And I I'm going to try and prove this tonight by showing you some things that are, they're real things that I've brought along tonight. And they are, they show you how they treated death in the 16th and 17th centuries. What these are, these are bills of mortality, they're called, and uh, that's one of, that's the cover page of one of them, and these were printed every week in London in the 16th and 17th centuries, and they are lists of what people died of. They're like Premier League tables of death, right? <laughs> so, let's show you the first one. This one is from a week in the uh, 1600s. The diseases and casualties this week, absolutely real. Aborted, five. Aged, 42. Burnt in his bed by a candle <laughs> at the Giles Triple Game. One. <laughs> so do we think this was a good or a bad week for being burnt in your bed by a candle at the... Also, if someone comes up to you and says, stay at my place tonight, it's called the Giles Triple Gate. <laughs> they know, I think. I like this one. Two people died of cough. <laughs> to do that now, isn't it? And this is a really big wretch. Yeah. <laughs> Three people died because they were frightened. <laughs> Some medieval version of Michael Barrymore couched them and said, fancy a swim. <laughs> I like this one. One person died of lethargy. <laughs> one person sat around so much that they died. Uh, nine died of stopping of the stomach. They were walking along, their stomach stopped there, and they were dead. <laughs> and one person died suddenly. <laughs> Look at this. 131 people died of teeth. Uh, one died of timpani in a bizarre kettle drum incident. <laughs> Three died of vomiting. What a piss up that must have been. <laughs> and three died of wind. <laughs> but they died or people standing nearby. <laughs> so here's another one. Completely different week. So two people died suddenly this week. <laughs> one fell on the other. I don't know. <laughs> I like this one. One person died because he was distracted. <laughs> oh, mate, what is it? Ooh. Who's gonna die? <laughs> One person died of mother. <laughs> well, I sometimes know how that could happen, actually. <laughs> um, and this is the last one of these I could find. This is uh, modern writing, it's from a history book. Ten died of cancer and wool. <laughs> from gladiators. <laughs> it's a bad day, is it, when you've got cancer, then you get eaten by a wolf. <laughs> what does your horoscope say? 46 were killed by several accidents. <laughs> they were medieval Frank Spencers, those people. <laughs> but the one I like most of all, and I've looked at a few of these, is the one person who managed to die of pile. <laughs> How is that possible? What a great big pile came out of his arse, covered over his head and suffocated him. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm David Hill, you've been lovely. See ya. <laughs> 